Hey everyone, welcome to Perea Photography. My name is Mike and today we're going to talk about my first week shooting with the new Nikon 100-400mm f4.5-5.6 to S lens. We're going to discuss both the good and the bad. We're going to go head out into the field to my local riparian reserve, put this lens through some tests, and then we'll come back into the studio and look at some images. Also a big thank you to b and Photo for loaning me this lens. I have it for a full month, so I'll be making a few videos about it here in the near future. Now as mostly a landscape photographer, the size and weight of this lens was pretty attractive. Uh, the form factor is almost exactly what the 70-200 2.8S lens is, but it weighs about 75 grams more. You combine this lens with the 24-120 f4 and the 14-30 f4, and you have the holy trinity for landscape photography lenses that ranges from 14 millimeters to 400, which would be extremely impressive. Uh, with the total combined weight, I think I would be pretty happy to hike around with it. I absolutely love coming to this place and it is every kind of shorebird you can think of. You know, we have pelicans and egrets and blue herons, you know, stilts and sandpipers and man, I come out here in one spot. We have like eight ponds out here. I want to go through a, a few things here. Uh, this is, I've had it for about a week and I've been out here at this spot and, and I want to give you guys my thoughts on it when it comes to things like focus and low light, obviously, putting on the 1.4 teleconverter. Uh, I have some footage I'm going to show you guys here in a second with it, but uh, so far I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it as far as it being a, uh, what I would consider the, the 24 to 70 of wildlife lenses. You know, for landscape photography, the 24 to 70 is like a mid-range. It kind of does a little bit of everything, but nothing really great. And I kind of feel that same way with the 100 to 400. It's a, it's a great lens, a great walking around lens. If you're gonna hike with it, if you wanna hold it all day, man, this thing is absolutely fantastic for that. But it's not great with the low light because of the aperture, right? It's a, a 4.5 to 5.6. But if you put on the teleconverter, you know, out to, 560 millimeters, which would be at your, your long end. You're looking at an F8. Oh, we got a little sandpiper out here. But yeah, man, like I said, this is a beautiful place for this. So we're gonna put it through some paces, hopefully get some uh, birds in flight, and uh, yeah, see what this thing can do. Looks like it's doing pretty good. I'm just on the back of the camera looking at at those geese that just flew by. Man, they look super sharp. So right now I'm using uh, animal auto area for the focus. Uh, the low light, you know, the minimum aperture at 400 millimeters is f5.6. And that's pretty rough when it's real low light like this. It's, it's hard to shoot and it makes that ISO bump up so high. You know, I'm shooting at 8,000, 10,000, 12,000, which, I mean, with the software and the quality of these cameras we have, I'm shooting on the Nikon Z7 II, which is a larger megapixel camera. You know, with, with that combined with the software, you know, there's noise reduction software that works really well that cleans a lot of that up. So it isn't as big of a deal as it used to be, but still, uh, I would much prefer like an F4 lens throughout, like the you know 200 to 400 F mount. The last week that I've been shooting, I end up with the 1.4 teleconverter on it. You know, if you're a bird photographer, then I definitely wouldn't recommend something like this, just because it's just not quite long enough for bigger animals or for places like this where I can get up really close. You know, I can get up to you know 10 yards from a white egret or something like that because they're just they're not afraid of humans here. These stilts and the little sandpiper that's right over here, it's not too bad. And for me, I'm a hybrid shooter, so I'm mainly a landscape photographer but I also do wildlife so for me to pair this with like the 24 to 120 um, man oh what do we got here what do we got here what is this Okay. 
Canadian geese, the jerks of the bird world. Man, I don't understand. It's like the only thing in Canada that isn't nice. It's our stupid geese. Found a cormorant up on a branch up here. I'm gonna take a shot of it. Sun's kind of coming up now, so handheld shot. Take the lens cap off first. There's a cormorant right here, uh, probably about 15 yards out into the water. There's some brush and the sun's come up now. So it's backlighting everything. Everything's kind of a golden brown. And this cormorant just hanging out and there's all kinds of bugs around there. And with the 400 millimeters, well, the way it's sitting here, you can see like the, all the bugs and everything are slightly out of focus, but it looks like little bokeh balls everywhere. And they're all getting hit by the light. <laughs> This has got to be probably my favorite shot since I've been out here over the past week. Oh man, no words. This is perfect. Welcome into Lightroom. So I wanted to take a closer look at a couple of these photos and just show you guys uh, a little bit closer look at some of the sharpness of this lens. And with good light, I was able to get pretty close to this rabbit as well. And you can see at 100%, uh, man, it, it's just, it is absolutely sharp. We'll go up here and zoom in to 200% just so you guys can see a bit closer and I mean you can just see all these little hairs he's got a little grass on his eye here and this is uh, just just insane how sharp this is I mean you can see all the little fine hairs around the nose the whiskers the eyes so I just when, when I got this back on the computer man I, I was just pretty happy with it uh, so these next two are from this white egret so I did two things so I took a shot you guys can see up here at the top right uh, it's at 400 millimeters, ISO 250, f5.6 at 1 250th of a second. So this is just the lens without the teleconverter on there. So we zoom in at 100%. And as soon as this loads, all right, look how sharp that is. I mean, all the details around the eye. You can see some of this. Looks like salt right here around the beak. Let's go into 200% so you can see even closer. I mean, just all these little details here in the in the hair in the beak is just absolutely incredible and then in the next one down here uh, it's it's essentially it's the same photo but what i did was i put on the teleconverter and i just wanted to see if there was any difference in sharpness so now i'm shooting at 410 millimeters f 7.6 because uh you know with that teleconverter it changes uh the minimum aperture instead of 4.5 it's now 5.6 uh, 
So anyway, yeah, I did it at f7.6 with my aperture, 1 250th of a second, ISO 250. So let's zoom in here to 100% or well, 200%, and you can see there's really no difference when it comes to the sharpness. Uh, you can see all of the same detail. We'll go back out to 100% here. And you can see all of the fine detail in the feathers. You got a little bug on its back up here. So let's do a little uh, a side by side. So let's choose this one and let's drop a photo from here. So we'll grab this guy and put it up here. So we have two separate photos and let's zoom in so we can see a side by side here at 100%. And man, there's just, there's not a lot of difference. Uh, the exposures will change a little bit. This one's a little bit darker, so we can bring this up a little bit, I guess, if we if we need to. But anyway, yeah, this, so as far as sharpness goes, I mean, there's not much. Maybe a little bit you can see here in the eye, but also the bird's turned a little bit, so it's a bit hard to say. I'm looking right here in this area with the beak. You can see the lines in the salt. And the same thing over here. I mean, there's just not much difference. When it comes to sharpness, you know, all around here, all these little creases in the beak, you can see all of that here, the same thing. So as far as sharpness goes between the, the teleconverter, uh, there's not, not much here, to be honest. It, it, looks, it looks pretty similar. So let's go back into this mode. And for the last one, we'll look at this cormorant that I was raving about in the field. And we'll zoom in to 100% here. And you can see now just the sharpness around the eye. You can see all the fine hairs. You can see the patterns on his back. And it's just, like I said, this lens, is, from a sharpness standpoint, is just incredible. I mean, it's, I would say it's definitely worth the price when it comes to just the technical quality of this thing and, and its performance in the field. Uh, how sharp it is is, is ridiculous. Uh, this last one here is... The flowers that I took from right around three feet. I didn't have a tape measure, but man, I was close. And with the teleconverter on up here, you guys can see that I'm at 560 millimeters, f8, 1 50th of a second, ISO 320. And you can see all of the little details. Now, the depth of field, you can see it falls off pretty quick. I mean, it's just sharp here, a little bit lower. It's starting to get fuzzy already. And by the time you're back here, it's it's already out of focus, man. So the depth of field, <laughs> you don't have much room uh, for for focus wise. I mean, you're you better get whatever it is you want sharp. It better be right here in the middle, even at f8. I mean, you guys can see being that close at 560 millimeters, it uh, it goes out of focus real quick. But man, that's pretty impressive for for a 560 millimeters to be able to focus that close was, yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. It really is. So let's start off with the good. The focus has been exactly what I hoped it would be. It worked flawlessly. As long as I was using the best autofocus settings for the specific condition, uh, I used a combination of single point AF, dynamic area, subject tracking, and auto area animal AF. To my surprise, the animal eye focus, uh, which would latch onto these little birds like the avocats and the stilts, and even that little sandpiper. These birds were anywhere from 15 to 30 yards away, and the eye focus was still catching them. As you guys saw during the Lightroom segment, this lens is extremely sharp. I would absolutely be comfortable printing some of these photos I got from this past week. So from a technical performance standpoint, uh, this lens is fantastic. I have no complaints. Now, I tested out the minimum focus distance as well, and I even put on the 1.4 teleconverter, and I chose a very manly subject, these wildflowers, and I was about three feet away. I didn't have a tape measure, but I put on the teleconverter. I had no issues grabbing focus at this distance, which is super impressive. Now, let's talk about where this lens falls a little short. The first feature that sits on the fence for both good and bad is the size and the weight. I mean, I love that I could handhold this all morning and not really get tired. I'd be more than happy to hike with this in my backpack. But the downside to that size and the weight is the minimum aperture. And this deals strictly with wildlife photography. At 400 millimeters and 5.6, 
I wish I either had more reach at times or it was an F4 lens. Just a little bit more light and a lower ISO would be nice. So there's definitely a trade off there. Now, if you're a bird photographer, that 400 millimeters is a bit on the short side of what you prefer for focal length. 500 to 800 millimeters is much more preferred, but if you're shooting mostly larger animals or you can get close enough to the birds well, without spooking them, then the 400 millimeter is fine. I found myself putting on the 1.4 teleconverter uh, the majority of the time when trying to photograph a lot of these birds. And of course, putting on that 1.4 teleconverter changes the minimum aperture, giving you essentially a 140 to 560 millimeter f5.6 to f8. This has a few obvious disadvantages. The first is having to shoot at high ISO values. Like I mentioned earlier, the noise reduction software can help a lot but it's not ideal. Uh, the second is the lower aperture lenses just give a much cleaner background. The difference between shooting at f4 versus f5.6 or f8 is huge when talking about creating separation with depth of field between the subject and the background. Now let's talk about value. These new S lenses are definitely a bit pricier than the F mount counterparts, and rightfully so. These lenses are absolutely beautiful, but this particular lens from a value perspective may not work for some people. For wildlife, I would argue that the F mount 200mm to 500mm f5.6 for half the price would be a better option. Let's put it this way, for the price of that 100 to 400, I could buy the 200 to 500mm F mount lens and I could book a flight to the Galapagos. My point is, there might be better options based on your budget or what style of your shooting is. For me, this lens would be great because I'm a landscape photographer and I also shoot wildlife. So having this new holy trinity would be perfect. Then maybe look later on at this 200 millimeter to 600 millimeter uh, S-mount lens uh, eventually when it does come out, specifically for wildlife. All right, guys, I'll be comparing this to the 80 to 400 millimeter F mount lens in the future. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and that little bell icon on the right to be notified when a new video releases. In the meantime, check out this video here where we photograph some rare alpine wildlife in Colorado. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you over in the next video.